This is Tim and we are inside the Mouse Castle on location at the Disneyland Resort in Anaheim, California. I'm at Trader Sam's Enchanted Tiki Bar at the Disneyland Hotel, part of their newly completed renovation of nearly a thousand rooms spread out over three towers rethemed to Fantasyland, Frontierland, and Adventureland. There are even two monorail water slides in the hotel's new pool area. Not a bad place to enjoy your fish tacos and a tasty tropical beverage. Today we're visiting with Margaret Carey, the original live action model for Tinkerbell in Walt Disney's Peter Pan. Margaret turned a nine month job at the studio in the early 1950s into a second career of sorts, appearing at countless Disney fan events. She's delightful and charming and I had a few moments to sit down with her earlier this year at the Disney fan site Mice Chat's seventh anniversary celebration. You obviously were the, uh, the live action model for Tinkerbell. How did that job come about? How did you get hired by Disney? Well, I have been working since I'm four years old and started in a Midsummer Night's, Midsummer Night's Dream and uh, our game comedies. And I've been a dancer and been working, just kept working through. I have been at ABC uh, doing my own show for four years, I guess. And then we had another big show. And then out of that, I got hired to go to Fox as assistant dance director by the young man who was to become the reference model for Peter Pan because I got him the job. So I got a call from my agent, said that they're interviewing for this little three and a half inch pixie who didn't talk. And I thought, uh, they said, could you get over and meet with Mark Davis? And I got the day off from Fox on the movie. It was called I'll Get By. So over I went uh, the next day, but the night before, I had made a little... You remember those 45 records with a great big hole in the middle? Yeah. Okay. I had made a, a choreographed making breakfast, a comedy style pantomime. You know, closing the door, dropping eggs, and, and well, trying to slip on things. So I took my little player over, my 45 over, and went on to the Disney lot. I can't tell you how thrilling that was the first time. It was thrilling for anybody who worked in the business. Mm -hmm. The Disney lot was different. They knew from anything else and it was happy time. So I went over and I immediately um, got lost <laughs> uh, and I was looking around and this tall man comes over and he says, are you lost? And I said, I'm supposed to go to Mark Davis's office. And he said, well, I'll take you. So we went through those those very plain animation buildings and went up to a third floor and he says, just right down there at that door, just call in and say Mark Davis. And I said, thank you. And it turned out to be Ollie Johnston who took me over. <laughs> I mean, that's that's the kind of place. It was just, it, it still is. I, I When I go over to Disney, there's just this creative blast and happiness that comes. Of course, I'm a little miss sunshine but it's true it's true and so I went in and I played the record for him and I did the pantomime and he I don't know whether he said right then and there or whether he called me back he said, would it be convenient for you to come to work next Tuesday I have never ever in my working life been asked whether it would be convenient I said yes <laughs> <laughs> so that's how I got that job and uh, how long did uh, the job take um, off and on over nine months, I, um, I had lots of other things I was doing. I was doing a regular television show. I was also on radio. Um, what else was I doing? Raising kids, I guess. <laughs> no, I hadn't had my children by that time. And so, uh, you know, just all the things that you, that you did. And they would call me and they said, we're ready for the next segment. And over I'd go happy as a clam. And so it took about nine months. So it was 1950 and 1951. And how does it make you feel that this nine month job, a very brief period in a, a career that spans decades, uh, that you come to events like this and people are lined up and people cannot wait to meet Tinkerbell? Well, it, it's, it's so thrilling. Uh, it was thrilling to do Tinkerbell in the first place because it was a challenge. Uh, you're out in front of the camera and you were hoping that you're doing what they want and, and they're checking their storyboards. And so 
I finished it and that was grand and then they asked me to come back to do a little something for them for promo maybe 10 years later I don't know how long it was because I was busy doing other things but I guess my point is my book that I'm working so diligently on right now um, is is called Tinkerbell Talks now that's the same as my website and they, people can find out and read chapters about my book on the website. Just scroll down the uh, homepage and hit the little button and there are three chap new chapters up. But I'm up to chapter actually 87. And and each chapter is 40 pages long, right? No, nope, 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 <laughs> no. Some of them are only one page because they're two pages of photos. Ha ha ha. But it's called Tinkerbell Talks Tales of a Pixie Dusted Light. And that's how I feel. This is just, um, I, I just keep getting covered with wonderful, wonderful pixie dust. I told the story today, I started in on telling a little bit about Disney flying me over to London for a press junket. Over to London. I mean, it was it was fabulous. And that was for an anniversary DVD release, yes, correct? that was the uh, uh, 50th anniversary. And then uh, they put me on a cruise ship and then they invite me to come and talk to all these wonderful people over here. Uh, it, it, and then I'm over at the studio a lot. It's, well, the fact that I can take my name and put it side by side with James M. Barry, with Peter Pan, with Walt Disney, with Mark Davis, and with Disney Studios, I mean, that is pixie dust all over. That is it fantastic. It follows me. It's wonderful. Great. What was it like to work with Mark Davis? He was a gentle man. He was uh, didn't talk a lot. He he knew what he wanted, and he was he would sort of sit back and go mm -hmm, mm -hmm, like this, because people I know had been telling him that she's too curvy, that she's um, not in sync with the movie, etc. And he go mm hmm, mm hmm, yes. <laughs> people walk up to me and say. It's such fun. Well, I used to watch you slide down from the Matterhorn. And you know what my answer is? Do I look crazy? <laughs> no. <laughs> that wasn't you up there waving the wand and sliding down. Oh, no, no, no. But amazing people who did it. Mm -hmm. And the little 72-year-old mm -hmm. who was the first one tiny. I mean, that you, it, that's a surprise. Disney is always a lovely, magical surprise. Being here today, I had no idea how many people were coming. I had no idea who would be here. And it was a magical surprise just because it's touched by Disney. It's wonderful. That is. Now, you got to meet Walt Disney briefly when you were doing your work, didn't you? Yes, I did. He would amble over and talk to Mark. And then, of course, me, uh, standing in Jerry Geronimi, the, the overall, one of the overall directors was there, so they'd chat. But he was working with Buddy Ebsen on a project about 30 feet away from where we were. And fortunately for the book, uh, Disney Photo Archives found some of the pictures that shows him working with Buddy Ebsen. Now, was that the dancing man? Uh, we think it's the dancing man. And it also had to do with... Um, registering human beings with uh, cartoon people so it, it, it was just he would come over I guess what my guess is four or five times uh, through the and believe me in 1951 in my one piece uh, bathing suit um, I had a cover-up so I wouldn't speak to Mr. Disney unless I had the cover-up you know we're being told that we're running out of time here Oh, no, we have to move along. Oh, okay, we got, we got to wrap this up. Well, um, thank you very much for your time. TinkerbellTalks.com is the website. Yes. And Tinkerbell Talks, the book, we can look for it. I hope in July. In July. In July. That's what, that's what I'm headed for. Okay. But um, do go on the website and read some of the chapters while you're waiting. <laughs> we will, definitely. Okay. Margaret Carey. And I will to say faith and trust and a whole bunch of pixie dust for everyone. Thank you, Margaret. Margaret Carey, um, such a pleasure. Thank you so much. And that's what's on my mind this time around inside the Mouse Castle. Be sure to pay us a visit on themousecastle.com and of course follow us on Facebook and Twitter. And if you must, you can also follow us on that redheaded stepchild that's Google+. See you next time. Take care. Mm -hmm.